So I'm here with uh, Doug Schneider, founder of Soundstage Network. And, you know, we had a question actually on, uh, you know, our YouTube video comments about, uh, you know, the ideal way to reproduce multi-channel music. And this person asked, uh, well, I have seven identical speakers and seven identical mono blocks, and they're all spaced according to the ITU angles and specifications, and I think that this is the best way to listen to multi-channel. And I wanted to get Doug's opinion, what he thinks about that. That's interesting because I'm not a big fan of multi-channel music. I've, I've heard it reproduced well and not so well. And it can, it seems to bring, some people say it takes the room out of the equation, but to me it's sometimes the setup can bring the room really into the equation. And the ITU setup does have that symmetry, which intuitively sounds like it would be good, but I'm not entirely sure how that would work in every room because it would have to do a lot with the reflections right. itself in the room. Um, so is it in a perfectly symmetrical room where you have the same left and right and rear left and right boundaries and whatnot? Now, one thing I do like is one of the problems I have with stereo is I'm very obsessive about symmetry. If I'm sitting, the speakers have to be perfectly left and right. They have to be perfectly towed in. I have to see even if there's any misleveling up and down or any of that. So I intuitively like that idea of perfect symmetry like that. And the seven monoblocks appeals to me too. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got seven the same. But would it matter that much? Let me ask you, what do you think? about? Well, the, I, I have a feeling, and I want to see if I think, it's going to depend as much on the room as it does that exact positioning. Absolutely. And I don't have any problem with the equipment setup per se. I think there is a lot of merit in it. Where I have a problem is, is anybody mastering on systems like that? And so the problem is, is with, like you've had some issues with multi-channel music. The little uh, minimal experience I have to it uh, they're just not really always mastered very well. And it, you've got like, you know, here's the drum kit coming from your left rear speaker. And it's kind of like, this is, you're trying to flood the room and make it like I'm in the middle of a concert, but everything should still be in front of me, right? That's the issue. Um, so, so I'm not sure. I think that as a technical standard, it makes a lot of sense. I just, I mean, I think it's going to be hit and miss depending on the titles you're listening to. I, t I tend to agree with that. And one of the problems I've always had with multi-channel music, now I know there's some good recordings that do it a lot better, but a lot of times it's the rear channels are simply more or less the front channels at a reduced level. So you've got instruments actually coming out of the rear channels at a reduced level. Right. Where in reality, if you're listening to a band, you would just simply have reflections, right. not the actual direct instrument sound right. back there. So it's a mixed bag. Yeah, I know people that love multi-channel music and won't listen to listen to anything else. Yep. They won't even bother listening to stereo anymore, or they process their stereo so that it gives them some some sort of, you know, fake multi-channel. But uh, you know, hey, you know, it's a great it's a great setup, and if you like the way it sounds, I mean, more power to you. Yeah, and truthfully, stereo is pretty flawed too. It's just two speakers trying to reproduce. A whole event it's so a it's big, not perfect it's a big problem yeah so i would say though i would start with that setup and then i would experiment a little with yep. placement yeah okay thanks doug no problem